Hello, and welcome to the Nature Journal Connection. I'm your host, John Muir Laws. Today, I'm gonna to show you a really fun way to explore an ecosystem on the pages of your journal. You're going to get a really cool diagram. And in addition to that, doing the investigation in this way is going to help your brain look at this place from all sorts of different dimensions to get your brain to look at it in a different way. If I were just to make a, a landscape drawing of what I see out here, I could record some of the information about this place. And we learned in an earlier episode how to make a cross-section of, uh, of an environment that we're exploring. Today, we're going to take these two ideas and join them together. We're going to be making a three-dimensional block diagram of an ecosystem that you're exploring. Let me show you how. To get started, let's just practice doodling cubes and cuboids. So those are three-dimensional squares and three-dimensional rectangles. There are a lot of different ways to construct these. They're a lot of fun. But what you want to do is just fill up the margins of pages with doodles of all of these different kinds of forms. You can add shadows on some of them. You can make some of them transparent. It's a lot of fun. Do a lot of these. The more you do that, the more comfortable you're going to get with these forms. Now we're ready to construct our block diagram. This is going to be a combination of the overhead map view and a side view or profile of the landscape that you're in. Think about the shape of both of those views. You might even want to draw them out at first. And then what you're going to do is to attach them together. I find it's helpful to start with the side view, the, the profile of the landscape that you're in, and sketch that onto the side of your cuboid form. Then project the map view out from that. How would that look as it was stretching out across the landscape? So you're now thinking about looking more down on the view as before you're looking on the side. The view that you have of trees is going to be different than you have in the map view. So in a map view, you're looking straight down on them. But in this three-quarter view, in this block diagram, you are going to be kind of looking more down at the side of the tree. So you can start with, with the, the, the ball of the tree and then drop a little trunk down underneath it. With a little bit of color, your side view and your top map view will stitch together, creating a three-dimensional block diagram. So to make a block diagram of this habitat that I'm exploring, I'm going to use a cross section along one side of the marsh here, along this side of the marsh, kind of going down into the water and up on the other side as one of the sides of my diagram. I want to be able to show how deep the water is at the different points across this waterway. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm actually standing or sitting on, on a little uh, causeway here that goes out into the marsh. And I'm just going to take a stick and put that down at different depths to be able to figure out what the contour of the bottom of this is. And then kind of going out in the other direction on my diagram, I want to be able to show this sort of interesting pattern of these fingers of plant vegetation sticking out. And so I'm going to be drawing that on one axis. I'm going to have the cross section on the other. I think it should be a lot of fun. And then I'm going to plot on top of that where the ducks and the coots are hanging out in the water. So I've got, well, oh, there it is. There's, there's, a, there's a golden eye, which is a really beautiful diving duck that is swimming out here along with a little coot who's paddling around the surface. So I'm going to be noticing where they hang out on this uh, in this little marsh.
I made some interesting observations of the coot and the golden eye when I was out at the marsh. The golden eye, the diving duck, was dipping below the surface and I'm guessing probably eating organisms off the bottom of the shallow, uh, the shallow pond. But wherever it went, you could kind of tell where it was swimming because as it was trying to keep itself underwater, its little duck feet <laughs> were flipping back and forth and they would make ripples on the surface. So this coot would then slide over to wherever those ripples were and was pecking down into the water. So I'm wondering, does the diving golden eye kick up food that the coot can then eat? Wouldn't that be an interesting interrelationship between those two organisms? So whenever the coot would, uh, whenever the golden eye would go to a different spot, the coot would then follow right over to that. Really fun interactions. But you see how I've actually used these block diagrams several different places on this page. It's just a wonderful way of helping me observe and also think in three dimensions. Your nature journaling challenge this week is to take a cross-section diagram and see if you can turn it into a block diagram. To take the idea of a landscape and attach it onto the side of your cross-sectional sketch and see what that does to help you start thinking about the space and the place in a different way. The goal here is not to have a pretty picture, but to have a tool that helps you think three-dimensionally about the space that you're in. This approach will help you think three-dimensionally about a place and is a useful tool in a nature journaler's quiver of techniques. Until next time, this is your Nature Journal Connection. Doo -doo -doo.